It's Monday, September 15th, 2014, and you're listening to Sin Boldly, the podcast, The Sign Your Name Project. I'm your host, Trey Comstock, and with me this week is, as ever, Stephen Doss. Good morning. On this week's episode, we are going to talk, since it is essentially Sin Broly, um, we are going to talk about sports. Da, da, but, da, da. But, but not like that. You'll see. So it's mostly a show all about discussion. means I don't get my favorite part, which is the news sound effect. I mean, we can still use the news sound effect. It just, it just makes me happy. It okay. just how, how rude were we talking over all those people who were talking in clearly Latin? <laughs> in clearly Latin. I had a lot of fun building that sound effect last year. Okay, so Steven, do you want to introduce this? Because you're, let's be clear, I don't watch football and you do. I so. have Monday Night Football. It's the Colts versus the Eagles on right in front of me at the uh, Washington, D.C. studio. I will watch it in the reflection on your glasses. Indianapolis is leading 17-6, by the way, just in case you're wondering. Um, just Woo! so you can date this. But Peyton the Manning Nash- doesn't play for them anymore, right? No, no. He plays Peyton for Manning Denver. For Broncos. Hey, yes. okay. I'm all over Andrew it. Andrew Luck is the quarterback for Indianapolis. But guess what? What? Neither of those teams have to do with our story. Correct. So two big stories come from the National Football League, both having to do with abuse. Um, the big one that's getting all the attention is Ray Rice, who is the who was the was. starting running back for the uh, Baltimore Ravens, a local football team in yeah, just, this area that yeah, I'm just at. Just right yeah. north of you. Yep, one hour north. Um, and he was caught dragging his wife from an elevator. She was unconscious. And the report indicated it was like, yeah, she was punched. And of course, you know, as... So, so he had made her unconscious. Yes, yes. Okay. That was the report. Um, yeah. She said she did something and she was sorry for it. And Ray Rice said, I'm Ray Rice. Uh, basically, that was the gist of it. Because um, that doesn't sound like a cycle of abuse at all. Not at all. Um, and so, of course, naturally, because this happened, you know, the National Football League came down hard and gave him a two-game suspension. Yep. Yeah, two games. Until a couple weeks ago. In fact, I think it was two weeks ago. The video from the elevator come in, came out because, get this, when you're in a casino, there's cameras everywhere. everywhere. So you don't steal the money. They, so you don't steal the money. Exactly. Um, shows him coming overhand and hitting her square in the face. Um, so that's not, what made her unconscious. Making her unconscious. Oh. Um, and, of course, when this video comes out, the National Football League and you know the people that were working with them never saw it, of course. And so naturally... Never saw happened, it. Yeah. So what happens is they suspend him indefinitely, and just to be safe, the Baltimore Ravens cut him from the team. He is released from his contract. And no one else is dumb enough to hire him. Yep, which means he gets $25 million. What? I didn't know that part. Oh, yeah, signing bonuses are a wonderful thing. Guaranteed money. So So. if you sign a five-year contract worth, let's say, $40 million, and they say we guaranteed $25, you'll get a five-million-year signing bonus. You're released, you still get the signing bonus because it's been promised to you. What? So, you knock your wife un... So, let's look at this in human terms. You yeah. knock your wife unconscious mm-hmm. in a Las Vegas elevator. You drag her now... Atlantic City. Atlantic City. Okay, uh, closer to Baltimore. That makes sense. In yeah. an Atlantic City elevator, you drag her unconscious body out of it. Mm-hmm. The NFL holds some sort of weird kangaroo court where Rice and his wife were interviewed together because, yep. again, that doesn't scream of cycles of abuse. Exactly. And he gets cut from a football team, mm-hmm. which is unfortunate, I suppose, for one's career as a football player, short though they may be. And he walks away with more money than I will see in my lifetime. Yep. Okay. I just want to make sure I understand this story. And just in case you don't think that this is a cycle of abuse, the wife comes out and says that everything's been blown out of proportion. She got knocked unconscious in an elevator. It's quite difficult to blow that out of proportion. And that the media should be ashamed of what they put her husband through. 
and he lost his job because of them. She needs help. I mean, all, you know, vaguely ironic tone that I tend to strike on this show aside, that woman needs help. Right. And so my question to you is, as a people of faith, number one, let's say you're a people of faith. You're also a sports fan. Um, you know, Sunday, the, uh, the Baltimore Ravens played, and there was a bunch of people sporting Ray Rice jersey saying that uh, everyone makes mistakes. He and, knocked his wife unconscious in an elevator. And we shouldn't punish him for if he, you know, wife didn't press charges. Because she's caught up in a cycle of abuse. He knocked his wife unconscious. I mean, I'm stuck on this fact, actually. Yeah. yeah. And so my question to you is, as a people of faith, can we support, you know, if we know someone is like Ray Rice, uh, Baltimore Ravens won a couple Super Bowls, also was involved in a murder in Atlanta during the Super Bowl. Uh, don't know whether he was the one that killed the person or he was just hiding stuff from the police. But either way, he was not so uh, innocent. Disconnected. Not so disconnected. We have you know a team here in Washington that's blatantly called a racist name. Yep. The Redskins. The Redskins. Which is... Which will be the you know, last pe- time I say that on this show. <laughs> I know, I know. In fact, you know, I was listening on the radio um, and they started calling it the team from Washington. It Just flat out, it needs a new name. Yeah, it needs a new name. But say you grew up in Washington, you watch the Redskins, and it's like there's other Native American names like the Braves in Atlanta. Which there's, should also go. Yeah, well, but those are... Things that Braves Native Americans least, have said. Is at least you know, a little... We're fine with it. Because it's not... It's kind of more of a pride thing. Yes, Chief Wahoo, I'm glad they got rid of him yeah. like 20 years ago. Right, but okay, so I get like the Braves is like an aspect of Native American culture. That is that is filled with pride. That is filled the with Red pride. Skits, is a uh, racial slur. It's a racial slur. Yep. Um, so you have that. Uh, yet the NFL is the number one sport in the united states it it it, it or nasco it, it or nascar kind it of or nascar it, and nascar is its own That's surprisingly another. nascar there you know not as racist as uh the what nfl you, what on earth are you talking about <laughs> name one african-american nascar driver i will empty my bank assuming you don't google this i will empty my bank account i'm broke by the way and give you <laughs> everything that's in there if you can name one african-american nascar driver Without I Googling. I cannot. Yeah, okay. Unless I Google it. But, name you know. one female NASCAR driver. Danica and you can only Patrick. name one. Yeah, and you can only name one. Danica Patrick. And yeah. NASCAR has its own problems, but they're also smart enough because yeah. they, to, to the cynical side of yeah. this, they realize that the values voters are also their um, core audience, right? So they yeah. even have a non drinking section of NASCAR tracks. I've been to a couple races and I sit in the non-drinking section so I don't have beer spilled on me by shirtless people. Go fast, um, turn left. But, you know, we're people of faith, but we also, you know, a lot of us like sports. Yep. So what do I'm we told. do when what we believe as a people of faith, basically not to hit women, um, comes at, co- or don't be racist. But I, but I think this was a conflict with our hobbies and you know what we like to do. If this was just a story about Ray Rice did a bad thing, and it was handled appropriately, this would be a very different conversation, right? right. If if he well, clearly he did, he uh, knocked his wife unconscious. If he was immediately fired, banned for life, and turned over to the authorities, that would be one thing. Right. But that's not what happened, and that's where this gets iffy. This, that's where this becomes an issue for people of faith. Because what happened is the NFL as an organization and the Baltimore Ravens as a team fed into a cycle of oppression. Right. So to link this together, if you're one of those people who conscientiously don't shop at Walmart because they play into a cycle of oppression, and then you watch the NFL in any way, you have committed an act of hypocrisy. <laughs> I mean, honest. I mean, I, I, re- I mean, the way I view that is that same way. Are you buying your organic bird-safe coffee, and you watch the Baltimore Ravens? You're a hypocrite. Are you yeah. driving your Prius down the road because if you're afraid of greenhouse gases, but you sit down and put on your Ray Rice jersey, you're a hypocrite. 
I mean, fundamentally, that's how I see this. Because this is this has gone beyond Ray Rice did a bad thing and needs to be punished, and it's turned into an issue of social justice. Because yeah. what the NFL and the Baltimore Ravens have said is hitting your wife, two game suspension. Knocking her unconscious in an Atlantic City elevator, two game suspension. Until there was incontrovertible evidence that they couldn't manage to hide from, and they gave him a two game suspension up until that YouTube video got out there. Yeah, yeah. And the thing is, you know, the, of course, you know, what happens is the automatic assumption is now, hey, they clearly saw this beforehand. Who kn- Look, I, you know. I mean, I don't know, but. I, I, I don't like spending. Are, it's like, yeah, in April, they saw it. Yeah, and that that's a report I've read. And then too. they just, yeah, and they like hit it much like they did with. You know the New England Patriots videotaping other teams' practices or awkward. <laughs> yeah, awkward. Um, but that's Tell comparing apples to oranges. That's cheating. This is no, abuse. They, this is abuse. And by burying that video, yeah. let's assume they saw it. Because mm-hmm. look, I'm not gonna. I you know I work real hard to give like Darren Wilson the benefit of the doubt, but I'm not giving a billion dollar corporation the benefit of the doubt here. Let's assume they saw that video. What? What they have then done is mm-hmm. supported a slap on the wrist for domestic abuse and make it that much harder for victims of domestic abuse and this victim in particular of domestic abuse yeah. from getting help. They have normalized and made it okay to do domestic abuse. Oh, there's a punishment. Oh, you need to say you're sorry, but it's not mm-hmm. really a problem. This is, I mean, this is terrifying. Yeah, that this is okay. That the NFL commissioner still has a job is ridiculous. Yeah, that anyone in that, and I'm not going um, Keith Olbermann, who's a political comment, sports commentator turned political commentator turned back to a sports commentator that I have deep affection for. He did a piece yeah. too, and basically he said that they all should resign and we should all be ashamed of ourselves. And I think that's absolutely true. Assuming yeah. that we includes NFL. Look, I'm going to boycott the NFL NFL all year. Big deal for me. I don't care right. about the NFL. I care about the victim in this case. Mm-hmm. But they all but, need to lose their jobs rapidly, not just Ray Rice. This isn't oh yeah. just a Ray, Ri- Ray Rice problem. All I have to say is the Washington-Baltimore metropolitan area, which consists of where the Baltimore Ravens play, and that other is, team from Washington, <laughs> according to which is also Wikipedia, in, in um, Maryland, is the highest income and fourth largest combined statistical area in the United States. Yeah. So Ray Rice is a popular player. You want to get people to your game so you can make money. Naturally, you're going to say two-game suspension because he's sorry and his wife loves him and they got married after because it was, she was her, uh, he was her fiancé before this. Oh, they okay. went so ahead what, and got married. Okay. Yeah. yeah, that woman. And so it's like, oh, and, he's not, and she's not pressing charges. Clearly, <laughs> they worked it out. Please they worked it out. His- he knocked her unconscious in an elevator. Yeah, please, 10 million people who live in this area, buy Ray Rice jerseys. This is... This is immoral, unconscionable, unjust, all of these things. And as a people of faith, we need... We... It is our theological task to care about those kind of things. Yes. You can look at a corporate structure and talk about how corporations are immoral and how fruit companies overflow... Worked on overthrowing, you know, Central American governments and how Kroger sells red slime meat and all of these yeah. terrible, immoral things that corporations do. And this is just one example of what a corporation can do. But unlike the oil companies and unlike the food companies, we are not so beholden to them. Right. You don't need football. No. I admit that I pay, you know, my, in some weird ways, my life is built on the oil industry. And I understand that that is a weird moral tension to live in. But in the end, I've got to get to and from work and all of these things. And so I understand that I make a moral compromise here out of a, what I view as a matter of nece- at least close to necessity. There right, is no and Reinhold clo- Niebuhr would say, you got to act. You got to act. There are going to be unintended consequences. And, you know, you still have to act. In this case, this is not a Reinhold Niebuhr level situation. Yeah. You don't have to watch football, so don't. Until I mean, Honestly, until the NFL commissioner loses his job and the entire Baltimore Ravens organization gets dramatically reshuffled out of this, I don't think anyone should watch football. Right. And I think anyone who does, in this case, professional football, we can talk about the college game, never. Um, <laughs> 
War Eagle. Yeah. Giga Maggies. Um, I, I don't think anyone should watch. I think this should be a, I just like in, you know, the mid nineties when the baseball players boycott, I think there should be a fan boycott of football. Mm hmm. Woman was knocked out of an elevator, dragged out, and he got a two-game suspension until they couldn't lie about it anymore. Yeah. So boycott football, which I think is just going to be the title of this episode. Unless you have any objections, Stephen. No, no, no. The Falcons stink so much that, you know, <laughs> so it's not you have so to bad. worry about anyone going, <laughs> doing anything there. I think what Matt Ryan is Catholic and... So the worst thing you have to do is he's praying the rosary before. <laughs> Great. Okay. Ain't so bad. <laughs> ain't so bad. So this one, I think the Ray Rice issue, I think is a pretty cut and dry it's issue from, dry. A, from, yeah. a, from a relig- from a religious, from a religious perspective. Religious. There's another story floating around the NFL again, oh, which yes. is not so cut and dry. Yes. Well, there's another um, player up in Minnesota. Minnesota oh, Vikings. Eh? Don't you know? Uh, Great, named, racist against Minnesotans now. Named Adrian Peterson. If you are from, I've heard of him? Yes, yes. He was the running back from Oklahoma, won the Heisman Trophy, got drafted number one, and he's a pretty decent running back. Well, turns out he hits his kids with switches as a disciplinary thing. Um, in his response, and he hits them, and and I don't know what the uh what the extent of the damage are, but it was enough to warrant um, child abuse allegations. Okay. Uh, which, child abuse is never okay. Oh, correct. Yeah, absolutely. absolutely. His, Against his, child abuse. Yes, yeah. let's go ahead and say that. Um, his defense is that that's the way he was raised, and so he's going to raise his kids like that. See, this is one of those sticky, those sticky yeah. issues. It is, is, I think there is an aspect of American culture that has just assumed that corporal punishment of children is over, that yeah. that that no corporal punishment um, is acceptable, right. and that it is a barbaric practice or that it is deeply damaging to children. And there are psychological studies, and it, there is evidence to say that that might be true. It, but in the end, it's not actually illegal. Up to a right. point. Up to a point. Um, it's what where that line is is different in different places, and I admit that I'm not a an expert on this. As we talked about last week, I'm, we're not an expert in any branch of the law, but particularly no. not this one. No. But, but it, like, it's not illegal. Yeah, it's not illegal for open purposes. I was hit with switches when I was a kid. Um, and look how I you sh- turned out. I mean, I know. So yeah, clearly there's something wrong, but. I mean, the big thing was it was like it's a cultural thing for us because I'm from the South, conservative, sure. Southern, um, and our good friend the Bible, yes, that one has some has some things to say about that. Um, for instance, mainly from Proverbs, Proverbs thirteen twenty four says, in the New International Version, "Whoever spares the rod hates their children, but the one who loves their children is careful to discipline them." Proverbs twenty three thirteen. Do not withhold discipline from a child. If you punish them with the rod, they will not die. Well, my parents did not want me to die at an early age, so I got the rod a lot when I did stuff wrong. Um, and if you're a biblical literalist, yeah, or, or you're my congregation, or I mean, you know, yeah, that that's or you're pr- Mary Mayor Larry Langford from Birmingham, who I remember his. Big campaign promise was whoop them children to make them better. Right. It's actually legal. It is is legal in some states in the United States to this day for teachers to administer corporal punishment with the permission of parents to children in schools. I believe Georgia is one of those states, actually. Um, Oh, yeah. So, to me, this one isn't as clear cut because certainly it was a you know, there's plenty of practices in biblical times that we feel we need to have moved on from. Um, yeah. The persecuting of homosexuals being being one what of if- those um, that we spend a lot of time talking about. And so it's not necessarily enough for us to go, well, it's in the Bible, so it's okay. There's a lot of things in the Bible that we, 
even directly said you should do in the Bible that we interpret in a different way and, and understand that they're not okay, that it's talking yeah. about a culture and it's, 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 it's written from a place that we are not in anymore. Um, and so you can certainly say, well, it's not enough that it's in Proverbs. And you're right. It's not enough that it's in not Proverbs. But, but it's, it's... Yeah, go ahead. This, it's, but even in modern American culture, it's not as clear-cut as I think some aspects of modern American culture. Let's call them um, affluent white liberals. Is that is that a f- fair... Um, or the affluent white intelligentsia? Is that a, yeah. a fair... Uh, uh, summation of the of this group of which I I am a member. Yes. Um, Stephen's pretty smart too. He may, he may be a member as well. Um, <laughs> it assumes that that is over, mm-hmm. but in reality, it is the day to day life for millions of people in this country. Exactly. Um, and those kids are also okay. And you know this. There are lines and standards, but this is this is stickier, I think. Yeah. And, well, for what happened, these allegations come up. He gets arrested, mm-hmm. makes bail, of course. Sure. And he gets, you know, suspended. Who pressed char- Okay. Stick. Sorry. Who pressed charges? I think it was just Child Protective Services okay. saw it and said, no, no, no. How did, um, how did CPS get involved? To the internet. To the internet. I, I can research that. You keep telling this. Okay. So, he's suspended for this game. You know, basically, he's like, so we're going to suspend you until this happens, till we, we make sure that everything's okay, and then you'll come back. If, you know, you can. If you get arrested and you have to go to jail, no, 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 no. Then the Vikings played the Patriots, the New England Patriots. And as we know, Adrian Peterson is a running back. Running backs get rushing yards. Um, Without Adrian Peterson, the Minnesota Vikings gain a staggering 54 rushing yards over the entire game, which, if you don't follow football, is pretty crappy. So that happens, and guess what? He's active for the next game. So basically, their punishment was wait until this all pans out, and then we'll see what happens. And now it's like, we need a running back, so please come back. Say average two yards per rush. Okay, so here we go. Here's the story. Yes. Um, the, his, the, the four-year-old child allegedly sustained numerous injuries after Peterson spanked him with a switch. Um, the boy's mother um, took the child to two doctors who suspected physical abuse and alerted the authorities. Okay. Peterson was then indicted by a Montgomery County... <laughs> you know what's really funny? Indicted in the courthouse where I used to work. Um, nice. Yeah, in Montgomery, Montgomery County, Texas. Um, I used to work there. May even have been my court. Um well, sorry, it's pl- the video auto played. Um, okay, Montgomery County, Texas grand jury um, th- told the grand jury that he never intended to harm his son and deeply regrets the unintentional injury. Um, mm-hmm. So what it looks like is, kind of from a legal perspective, he may have crossed the line, right? Um, in terms of what is between corporal punishment that is acceptable for children um, under a legal standard and what is considered child abuse. Right. And that's that I think that's part of what's complicating here because this wasn't like some neighbor might have saw something. This was the doctors who inspected the boys injuries alerted the police because they um, They they suspected something. Yeah, they suspected something. So I... He's 29 years old. He looks like uh, Petey from um, Room of the Titans. Um, yeah. <laughs> at least that's what he looks like in his mugshot. Um, yeah. He's a football player. He is strong, and if he comes after you with a switch, it's going to hurt. Yeah. And so, yeah. But I think this is part of, you know, part of the problem with corporal punishment. Yeah. Um, and, and, and why I... I personally don't intend to do it as a parent is one is when 
it is an en- it is an inherently angry act, at least to a certain extent, right? Yeah. And it is difficult in anger to practice appropriate restraint, which can lead to it going too far and right. putting the child at risk. The other thing is it it is to a certain extent an authorization of violence that may or may not teach it, it's difficult to see what that what that teaches a kid right right um if if it was really true that every child who was hit went on to be violent there would have been no pacifists prior to 1900 or no exactly. pacifists prior, prior to 1920 right like and that's simply not true there have been quakers for a real long time mm-hmm. um so i i I, it can't be as simple as, oh, they just grow up real violent. I mean, that can't be true. Plenty of people who don't get hit grow up violent, and plenty of people who do get hit grow up to be pacifists or yeah. to not do that. Or it doesn't necessarily create a cycle of violence, but it does run that risk, at least. Mm-hmm. So, I, this one, I, I, this one, quite honestly, I don't know what to do with it. Yeah, and I mean, you've had people come out in defense of him. Charles Barkley said that... Um, if you got, I believe his quote was something along the lines of, and I'm just paraphrasing, if you think hitting your child with a switch is child abuse, then every black family has committed child abuse. Hmm. But that, but that's not actually, in a I way, mean, that's not, a, I, I yeah. disagree with Mr. Barkley. <laughs> well, Mr. Barkley is a great, uh, great philosopher on... The, no, he's a basketball player. <laughs> right. So I disagree with him on this on uh, this because A, I, I think it's a little unfair to make this a racial argument. Right. Um I I don't know the numbers, right? So I don't know if more African Americans hit their children than my I have no statistics to operate under. Um yeah. but this isn't just the, the, the facts here. Isn't just that he hit the kid. That's not actually what's in play. It's that under medical inspection of what happened to the kid as a result of his Him of Peter, Mr. Peterson's actions. Yeah. Um. Medical professionals viewed this as crossing a line. Yes. That's what's in play here. Now, in the national discussion, I agree. This is turning into a "don't hit your kids" moment. Yeah. But that's not really. He didn't get. He didn't turn himself in over no. simply the fact that he hit his no. kid. No, no, no. He wasn't like, I feel really bad that I hit my kid with a switch. It was like, I was disciplining him, and this was an unattended consequence. Right. And that's where it gets dangerous, is when you open someone up for those kind of unintended consequences. Exactly. All right, I can't find what court, no one else cares what court in Montgomery County he's in, but <laughs> it could have been mine. Um that's really kind of funny. Um, as ever, uh, I feel like we close out the show like this every week. Um, we're not going to settle these issues. Um, no, no. Except boycott football. Um, that's a, to me, that's a pretty settled issue. Um, but if you have any feedback, if you disagree with me, as ever, um, don't email. I mean, email. Um, what is it? Enfe- uh, sin boldly, S Y N boldly, at nfear.org, facebook.com slash assign your name project, or at sin boldly, S Y N boldly, on Twitter. And go in peace to love and serve the Lord and end fear by signing your name. Good night. Okay, it is the court in Conroe. Got someone to confirm that for me. Nice. Oh, local commercials. <laughs>